Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, you're all very welcome to the membership conferring ceremony here this evening. It's great to be welcoming people here in person and to the RCPI. This building is the heart of our organization that spreads not just in Ireland, but worldwide. And so it's wonderful to see people face to face. Over the last two years, our virtual ceremonies have allowed us to celebrate the exceptional work that's been carried out during some immensely difficult times, with many here today working as the unseen heroes on the front line of the pandemic. And adding up the years, because it's hard to remember where we are at the moment, time is gone. A lot of the people here were the interns who graduated early in 2020 and started work. The rest of us, when you finish your medical school and you become an intern, you've got a couple of year, a couple of months of dossing around and going out to Thailand or South Africa. They didn't do that. They came and they helped us and they started working early and we commend them for this. And today is a day for celebration. So I'm going to introduce the platform party, starting at the other side, Professor Shane Higgins is a fellow of the Institute of Obstetrics and Gynecology, but also here is a very proud father. Dr. Lucianne Behan is Director of Examinations for the Institute of Medicine. Um, Prof. Mary Horgan is, of course, the president who I should have introduced first, I apologise. And Dr. Keir MacDonald is the Associate Dean of Examinations for Paediatrics. And I'm Mary Higgins. I'm the Vice President and the Chair of the Obs and Gynae Exam Board. As we look around the college building, the portraits hang in the walls. There are two new additions we'd like to point out. First of all, in the stern room where the candidates, the members in today, signed their college rule book, you may have seen the portrait of the late Laura Brennan. Laura Brennan was an amazing campaigner and advocate for HPV vaccine. And she's recently said to have saved thousands, it is said that recently that she saved thousands of lives. And she's the first non medic to be honoured in this way. And of course, our president, Mary Prof Horgan, whose portrait is on the corridor as you walk out with a beautiful pink dress. It was launched by the Taoiseach Michal Martin earlier this year. And it's great to finally get some female representation in these hollowed walls. And it's long overdue. But as you look around the faces staring at you from the framed pictures, know that today you are joining the ranks of the members of the Royal College of Physicians. It's an exciting moment in your careers. It's one who you have earned through your hard work, your determination and your dedication, as well as the support of the people who are here with you today. Well done. This is a meeting of the Royal College of Physicians for the purpose of conferring membership, which I now declare open. With your permission, President, I will now proceed with the conferring ceremony. Please proceed. I will ask all licentiates and members to stand and read with me the declaration for membership. So I, and say your name, do hereby solemnly and sincerely promise, all together please, that, that I will observe and obey the statutes, bylaws, and regulations of this college, members and members, and will submit to such penalties as may be lawfully imposed for any neglect or infringement of them, including the erasure of my name from the list of members and the surrender of my diploma of membership received from the college. I further promise and declare that we will, to the best of my ability, do all things in the practice of my profession for the honour of the college and the good of the public. I further promise and declare I will not keep open shop for the sale of medicines or endeavour to obtain practice or attract public notice by any unworthy means, nor will I either permit or sanction the use of my name by any other person for such purpose, or in connection with any secret remedy, and in case of any doubt relative to the true meaning of this engagement, <laughs> I promise to submit to the judgment of the college. Thank you. 
I will now call on the President, Prof Mary Horgan, to formally admit the new members of the College for membership. I will now formally admit the new members of the College to membership. By virtue of the authority vested in me as President, I hereby admit you collectively as licentiates and members of the Royal College of Physicians of Ireland. Congratulations to you all. Congratulations to all our new members. You may all be seated. I will now ask each new member to come forward and receive your parchment as your name is called. Irma Ahmed. Joseph Dick Anderson. Sean Boyd. Kira Casey. Arif Saeed Chowdhury. Christine Elizabeth Condon. Georgia Carla Dugacci. Harry Alexander Joseph Economos. Oshin Friel. Carol Mary Gaffney. Daniel Khan Hadi. Luke Patrick Harrington. Anna Healy. Laura Louise Hennessy. Tess Alexandra Higgins. Aoife Howard. Mid Mufasal Islam. Cormac Jennings, Ryan Keating, James Lawler O'Neill, Neve Lang, Julian Michael Larkin, Kelvin Lynch, Grace Mairead Madigan, Connor Marmion, Megan Marshall, Hugo Mays, Kieran McCloskey.
Roisin Kate McConnell. Uh, we're going to pause here for a second, Roisin. I'm going to embarrass you slightly. Roisin was in call with me yesterday and never said a word that she's getting her membership in both medicine and obstetrics and gynecology. Eamon McCrohan. Chloe Louise McDermott. Faisal Moyne. Ash Damien Vincent Moore. Anya Nikinon. Rudan Ole. Claire Marianne O'Brien. Patricia O'Dwyer. Katie O'Shaughnessy. David Michael O'Sullivan. Nicola Ann, Nicole Ann Pierce. Sorry, Nicole. Orla Power. Neve Mary Ryan. Martin David Ryan. Chanel Samodi. Kate Sexton. Patrick Short. Kieran Skihan. Lorna Tate. Shriha Tapa. Amy Worrell. Sari Ambuso. And not but last, but absolutely not least, Farah Zulfagar. I will now call on one of our new members. Um, I'm very proud as a UCD person to say this, Dr. Grace Madigan will address us. Thank you, President, fellows, and fellow members. Good evening. It is an enormous pleasure to join with you all in celebrating this significant achievement and major milestone. Sometimes occasions like this can turn into a bit of a laundry list of thank yous, but it is important to remember the people who got us here today and to acknowledge them. So firstly, thanks to the college and its fellows and members with whom we work. There are registrars, our SPORs, and our consultants. And they're the ones who teach us our trade from the first day we arrive into the hospital as medical students to preparing us very diligently for the exams and in the future. Secondly, of course, to our patients. If you've ever been admitted in a hospital in Ireland or indeed anywhere, you might be familiar with the gangs of trainees that go bed to bed looking for a suitable patient to practice on. 
Our patients patiently sat up in their beds and allowed us to elicit their stories, sometimes in front of a crowd, and subjected themselves to prodding and poking and did so without complaint and without audibly at least wondering why their doctors were still taking exams. Thirdly, of course, to our supporters, our families and our friends, who themselves must also be wondering how many exams there could possibly be left. The life of an NCHD is a peripatetic one, and it's our families and our friends who provide a constant as we move from hospital to hospital and job to job. And they are the ones providing the supportive ear when we regale them with stories about work or complain about work. And certainly in my family, at least, I've regaled them with so many stories about work that I'm quite sure they could turn up and do tomorrow's ward round and do a very good imitation of me. And I'm quite sure my family is not the only one. But of course, probably our biggest thanks and recognition has to go to each other, our colleagues and our new fellow members. It is to each other we turn, whether that's for a fortifying cup of tea at 4 a.m. in the res, or a second pair of eyes at a tricky cannula, or somebody to talk over a puzzling case with. This is a wonderful achievement, but we did it as a team. And whether that's leafing through the question banks together, or getting a copy of the guideline from somebody, or nominating a pal to chase down a consultant to clarify a point we don't really understand. And that was just for the written exams. When it came to the clinical exams, we got together in groups of twos or threes or fours. Somebody was doctor, somebody was patient. If you're an obstetrician like me, that involved one person putting a pillow under their jumper and the other person nodding thoughtfully and trying not to laugh at how ridiculous he looked. It has been a sometimes long, but overall very enjoyable road to today. It's important today to reflect on our careers to date and on the challenges and the opportunities that lie ahead. Our health service is undergoing a period of particular challenge at the moment. And when you think about that, it's easy to become downhearted or disengaged. But I would caution you not to, to remember and reflect upon the enormous privilege we have as physicians and as members of the college and to use those reflections as little beacons of optimism for the difficult days that lie ahead. Whether that's the privilege of being somebody's doctor, helping to look after them and holding the trust that they place in us to look after them appropriately. Whether it's the privilege of shaping our specialties. Today, we are one step further along the road to finally qualifying. And in so doing, we will help to change and improve the practice of our chosen fields. Becoming members of the college makes us more senior members of our teams at work. And part of that brings with it the privilege of helping to teach and train and support the people coming along after us and helping to drive the high standards of academic and clinical excellence that the college has been known for for its past 360 years. The college is its members. We are the college. It is an enormous privilege to join the college with you all. I really look forward to celebrating with you now and working with you in the future as we work together to improve the healthcare for the people of Ireland. Congratulations. <laughs> I will now call on the President, Prof Mary Horgan, to address you. Uh, thank you very much, Mary. Grace, you've put me under a bit of pressure to follow that. Um, but I'll follow it as the, as the more senior generation, but um, assured by the fact that um, we have the next generation, the people at the back of the room will really appreciate the talent that we have in front of us because this is the next generation that will be um, looking after us. That's why I'm always really nice to the trainees, because some of them are going to be geriatricians looking after us um, in another 10 years or so. But guest members and fellows, um, it's a great pleasure to welcome you to our home. Um, and this is a doctor's home. It's, it's for the members and fellows. Um, we had a hiatus of about two years. Our first um, memberships happened in April of 2022. 
and uh, uh, on the others were online. So, you know, the reason for that, uh, obviously the pandemic. So it really is good to be back in our home again. And a lot has changed um, over that period of time. It was particularly challenging. Every single person in the room here was affected both professionally and personally um, during that time. But any time I did go on the media and try to be very optimistic, because I knew that science would um, bring us to a better place. It has always happened. The college um, was founded in 1654. We've gone through numerous pandemics. Um, and what's happened in the last few decades is science has accelerated our solutions um, to getting us to where we are today. And I'll give you an example. When I was in UCD as a medical student, um, there was a new um, disease discovered um, in 1981 called AIDS. It took four years for um, science to develop a test. Fast forward four decades, new virus SARS-CoV-2, it took less than a month to develop a test. So science has really accelerated our ability to um, get us to uh, more normal. And not only will it teach us about SARS-CoV, but all of the impacts it has on our systems like inflammatory diseases. And the people in front of us here, as many of us um, are um, involved in research and education, will get involved in um, not only finding cures for um, diseases, contributing to national knowledge and international knowledge, but will also be involved in advocacy um, for, for marginalized communities, um, for policy development. And this college has played a central role in pandemic response. We're the home of NIAC. Many of us were on NEFID, um, on various communications, rapid testing, and so on. And that was our job um, to give back to those that educated us, supported us um, in every corner of the country because we are. And it happens for those that practice, as we have here also in other countries, our public educate us. And there we have a duty to uh, return um, as much as we can when we're called on. So we've sacrificed a lot. Um, the home here, uh, while the college is 360 years old, um, the uh, building here is from uh, 1864, 1863, but there was a fire as soon as they bought it. Um, so it was uh, 1864. So it is great to be back. Um, the college did play um, a central role in disseminating a lot of education. But when I went back on the front line um, in the first wave in March, 2020, you know, I knew as much as my uh, colleagues in front of me. I learned from them. They learned from me. We looked after each other. We looked after our patients to the best of our ability. And we were fortunate, certainly in this country and many countries, that we had an educated population who understood the importance of science and bought into vaccinations. Um, and I never did think that... Um, I would see a population knew everything about variants and everything about PCR, everything about vaccines, how many doses, what type, and so on. So we do need to move from that paternalistic way of telling people what they should do as opposed to engage with them so that they understand why things are done. And I think the pandemic showed that. From my point of view, I was in your seat um, uh, 34 years ago. That went fairly quickly. Um, I never thought that I would be president, but I did get involved in the college once I came back from working in the States and contributed to exams. Um, so I do realize the uh, commitment and hard work that it takes to get where, where um, you are today. Um, but you can get to where I am too. You know, you take chances, you take risks, you succeed, you fail. But failure isn't um, really failure, it's just learning. It's, it's part of life. Um, and I certainly didn't think I would be the first woman elected, uh, nor the first Kerry woman. I had to bring in the Kerry part, given that we, um, Sam is home in, in its home county again. Um, we're, we are conferring uh, about 150 members um, today in medicine, obstetrics and paediatrics. And just to reiterate what Grace said, you know, this is your college. Participate in it. If you don't think we're doing things right, we're big into getting feedback and changing things. I do want to acknowledge some of my colleagues, some of whom are here today, Dr. Lucianne Bean, who's Director of uh, Examinations for General Medicine, Dr. James Jameson, Professor Kathy McHugh, and Dr. Helen Chewett, 
uh, Dr. Kira uh, MacDonald, who's Associate Dean of uh, Exams in, in Pediatrics, Professor Mary Higgins, who's Chair of Obstetrics and, and Gynecology Exam Board, as well as our Vice President, Professor Paul Byrne, Dr. Mark Hare, and Dr. Nikki uh, Purandara, um, and all the, the people in the college and our administration staff, some of whom are here today, that organize all of this. Um, people give, we give of our time to help um, pass on the baton to the next generation. To acknowledge um, our families and friends in the back, um, we're a team at work, but we're also a team at home. Um, you would not be here without the financial, moral support, um, the cups of tea, um, I'm sure the financial support has stopped, um, but you know it, it's uh, it's a proud, particularly proud day for for family and friends. Uh, so to not just to acknowledge them. So um, get involved in the college, make a difference. Um, you know you can be me in a few years' time. Um, I wish you well on your personal missions. Be ambitious with your 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 goals. Don't be afraid to take chances. Go away, but come back. Um, you know, it is part, we are educated by our population, by our public. Um, so it's not all about us, it's about giving back too. Um, and make the most of the wonderful opportunities we have for training this country, because you can go anywhere. Um, the front line is a fantastic place to work. It's uh, probably under acknowledged, uh, but we continue to remind um, your employers of how fantastic our frontline staff are. So follow your dreams, do be ambitious. And once again, a warm congratulations from me, the council, our executive board, and have a very enjoyable uh, day and night at this stage with your uh, families and friends. Thank you. That completes the conferring ceremony for membership. Now, listen, after two and a half years of the pandemic, you're only dying to get out and party and have a celebration. We're going to ask the guests to remain in the Corrigan Hall, where we're going to take a group photograph, photograph with new members, as is in the main entrance hall. And then we'll have a reception for the, um, we'll follow the group photograph in the Graham's Hall.